So now that we've looked at the buyer side of the market through the demand curve and the seller side of the market through supply, we can bring them together to look at the market as a whole. And in particular, we can look at something called equilibrium. So equilibrium is going to be the price where uh, quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. Graphically, the equilibrium point is going to be the intersection of the upward sloping supply curve and the downward sloping demand curve. We're going to have this equilibrium is going to have two different components, an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity. The equilibrium price is the price that causes quantity supplied to be equal to quantity demanded. The equilibrium quantity is going to be the numerical quantity, which is going to be the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded, which are the same thing at this point, at the equilibrium price. Now it's going to be called equilibrium because if we're not at that point, there's going to be pressure, either downward pressure on price or upward pressure on price until we get to equilibrium. But once we're in equilibrium, we need outside forces to kind of push us away from that point. So let's take a look at this graphically. So here's our Cartesian plane with price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. If you remember, due to the law of demand, we have a downward sloping demand curve, which we'll label D or demand. At the same time, because of the law of supply, as we saw, we have this upward sloping supply curve. Now the price at which these two curves cross is going to be the equilibrium point. So let's just make a red dot right at that point. And within this equilibrium, we have two different, um, we have two different components of this equilibrium. We have an equilibrium price, which I'll label P star, and an equilibrium quantity, which I'll label Q star. And I'll just label the equilibrium E1 to point out that it's an equilibrium. Now, as I said before, the equilibrium, um, we're not going to leave this equilibrium unless there's changes or outside forces push us away from this equilibrium. But it's going to be like an absorbing state. For example, Let's say we're at this price up here, at pH. We're at a price above the equilibrium price. At this price, the quantity demanded is less than the quantity supplied, in that we have excess supply. This means there's lots of leftover products the buyers aren't buying. So in order to get rid of this surplus of inventory and increase their sales, firms are going to start lowering their price. And by lowering their price, we're going to be moving down until we reach equilibrium. Conversely, let's say we're at a price lower than equilibrium price or PL. At this price, if I go across, the quantity supplied is less than the quantity demanded. So in this case, we have excess demand. So it's going to be really hard to get products because everyone wants to buy them at that low price. So we're going to have a shortage. And so what firms, how firms are going to react to having a shortage, they can't keep products on their shelves, they're going to start raising the price. And as they raise the price, the quantity demanded falls, and they're going to keep raising their price till we get back to equilibrium. And that shortage is resolved. So this is why equilibrium is almost an absorbing state. So if we're absorbing state, if we're out of equilibrium, market forces are going to push us back to equilibrium. As we've discussed in previous videos, there are non-price determinants of both demand and supply. And when there, there are changes in these non-price uh, non determinants, we have shifts in supply and shifts in demand curves. So now let's use this equilibrium framework to look at what happens when we have changes in these non-price determinants of supply or demand. In general, we should think about Three, using three steps to determine what's going to happen to equilibrium when we have changes in these non-price determinants. The first thing to do is decide whether an event is going to shift the supply curve, the demand curve, or both. The second thing we need to decide is which direction it shifts. 
Does it, does this event decrease supply or increase supply? Decrease demand or increase demand? And finally, we can use our supply and demand diagram to figure out what happens to equilibrium price and quantity. Let's look at four different um, things that could happen in our supply and demand framework. Now let's take a look at what happens to equilibrium when we have changes in demand and supply. So on the left hand side of this uh, worksheet, we have inc an increase in demand and then below it a decrease in demand. And we'll talk about what happens to equilibrium. And then we can move back to supply or over to supply on the right hand side. And we'll look at a inc what happens to price and quantity in equilibrium when supply increases and when supply decreases. But let's start on this top left panel. And so let's imagine something happens that increases demand. For instance, the number of buyers increases or something becomes in fashion. Well, we know that's gonna cause an increase in quantity demanded for each price, which shifts the entire demand curve to the right. So for instance, the entire demand curve could shift to the right from demand curve D to demand curve D prime. We know as soon as this shifts happens at the current equilibrium price or at the old equilibrium price, now the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. So we have excess demand. So we have a shortage, which means sellers are gonna raise their price. And so as the price rate uh, rises, the quantity demanded goes down until we're at this new equilibrium point, which I'll label with this blue point. So now we see quantity uh, exchanged in this market has increased in this new equilibrium and price has also increased. So notice that this increase in demand, when we have an increase in demand, price and quantity move in the same direction. Let's take a look at the lower panel now with a decrease in demand. So maybe the price of a complement goes up, which is going to decrease the demand for this good. It's going to decrease the quantity demanded at each price, which shifts the demand curve to the left. Let's do it in red again. So the entire demand curve is shifting to the left. This is going to create at this old equilibrium price of P star. Now the quantity demanded is less than the quantity supplied, or there's excess supply of this good. As we just discussed, that means sellers are gonna lower their price, and we're gonna move along the supply curve until we get to this new equilibrium point where the new demand curve crosses this old supply curve. So this blue dot that I just put in is the new equilibrium point, which corresponds to a lower quantity exchanged, as well as a lower price. So again, when demand shifts, they're moving in the same direction. Both price and quantity are moving in the same direction. Now we can move over to supply. And I'm just gonna shift the screen over so we can center it. So the top panel, we have an increase in supply. So maybe there's a fall in input prices. So remember, input prices are one of the non-price determinants of supply. And a fall in input prices is going to increase quantity supplied at every price. So the whole supply curve would shift out. At this old equilibrium price of P star, we again see the situation where quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. So there's excess supply. Well, firms are going to react by lowering their price and moving along this supply curve. And they're going to keep lowering their price until we're at this new equilibrium, which we'll label the quantity as Q star star. Notice that the quantity has now gone up in equilibrium. The quantity exchange in this market has gone up, but the price has gone down. The equilibrium price has gone down. So when we just shift the supply curve, the price and equilibrium quantity are moving in opposite directions. Let's look at the a decrease in the supply curve. 
in this bottom panel. So again, something that could happen is there's an increase in input prices, which means firms are willing to supply less quantity for every price level. So this is going to cause the supply curve to shift to the left. Again, at this old equilibrium price, we have excess demand since quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied at this P star, which means firms are going to raise their price. And firms are going to raise their price until quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. Where, with, where at this new equilibrium point, where the new supply curve crosses the old demand curve. Now we see a reduction in the quantity exchanged in this market, but an increase in the price, the equilibrium price in this market. So again, they're moving in opposite directions. Now in the real world, we often see lots of factors changing at the same time. So something to keep in mind is if both curves are shifting at the same time, we might not be able to say something determinate about both price and quantity. The final topic in this module is the algebra of supply and demand. And the idea here is that we can use an equation for a line to represent both the supply curve and a demand curve in that we could write quantity demanded as a function of price. There'd be a negative coefficient in front of price to represent the law of demand. We can represent the supply curve by saying the quantity supplied is a function of price, but here it's a positive function of price. The higher the price, the greater the quantity supplied. Then if we set those two things equal, those two lines equal, we can find out where those two, uh, two lines cross. And that would be our equilibrium point. And this allows us to solve for an actual number for quantity, uh, for quantity exchange in the market, equilibrium quantity, as well as equilibrium price. 